Renee and master of the TDS. I'm writing Raven. We have three topics for you from the past week in one video. A synopsis of the psycho. A psycho synopsis. Acolyte again? Come on, Lucasfilm. We can't keep doing this. Greetings, my child. Who are you? I am Mother Anicia, and I bring you a message from Leslie Headland. All right, what does she want this time? Him. The power of one. The power of two. I inflict pestilence on bigots like you. Okay. Was that supposed to be a threat? Do not underestimate the power of our diversity. We have transcended the laws of nature. We can conceive without men. Ah, I see. More Disney Star Wars delusions. Honey, get the straight jacket! The power of many fans we have alienated. And it will only drop from there. The third episode of Disney's the Acolyte is criticized as one of the most disappointing Star Wars episodes ever, with poor dialogue, confusing plot points, and lackluster production suggesting a decline in quality storytelling within the franchise. All of that is an understatement. Let's start with the elephant in the room, shall we? The Immaculate Conception? So, if you've watched Star Wars, you will know that Anakin was conceived without a father. That's one of the biggest things that happens in the prequels, and it was that the Force was impregnated his mother to kind of balance out the light and the dark. Basically, he's space Jesus. Pretty much, yeah. So uh, this completely undermines that and makes Anakin no longer special. But when we refer to this, it I, I don't even know how to say this without you guys won't believe us if you haven't seen it. It's a cult of lesbian space witches who do a ritual. They're not night sisters, by the way. Unfortunately, I like the night sisters. They do a ritual, a musical ritual, Oof. and impregnate someone with force twins without a father. And uh, not to mention that they, this force slash thread is a female entity, which really defies the laws of nature and is not at all how reproduction works. Well, it doesn't specifically mention it's a female entity, but that's heavily implying it because it means that before Anakin, this happens way before the prequels even occurred. Mm -hmm. So that means before Anakin was conceived, he's not even special anymore. Yeah. Way to go, Headland. And as I said, there's a cringe musical number, the power of one, the power of two, the power of many. Don't start. That was the cringiest thing I have ever heard. My ears were bleeding. More like the power of apathy. The viewership for this show that they tried to tout around and say, look, 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 it got 4.8 million views in the first day. Well, when you compare it to the Ahsoka numbers throughout a five period of time, you find that there's 3 million people missing. In other words, after Ahsoka, three, at least 3 million people left. Now... We have to recognize that the Acolyte is not as well known as Ahsoka, so that could be a potential for some discrepancy. True, Ahsoka is a very popular character, even though I really hate that her leku are too short, which I will say every time we talk about Ahsoka. Yes. And uh, I still think that Ahsoka should have died in where he, when she fought Vader, but regardless... It would have been a perfect ending. People are getting mad because it's being review bombed, whatever. Look, is there people who go and review bomb shows? Yes. Of course! Does it happen for positive as well? Yes. And does someone review bombing a show mean that it's be mean that it's must be good? No. Not at all. And guess what? Currently, it is so low that it actually is now the lowest rated Star Wars project of all time, surpassing the Star Wars Holiday Special. Yeah, I think with a fifteen percent audience score. It keeps bouncing up because people are trying to out down to to counter vote it, and that's what we mean. Review bombs do exist but so do positive ones. Yeah, to be worse than the holiday special, that, uh, that's quite the achievement, and not in a good way. The power of many fans who are not coming back. The end. And next we have Gina Carano's court case. Wait, is she coming in? Ha-ha! You wish! You again? I knew we should have invested in mousetraps! You fools! Those puny things won't work on me! What do you want? 
I'm here to stop you and your husband from leaking any potential evidence of my company's involvement in Gina Carano's harassment campaign. But you said there was no harassment campaign. I said allegedly, meaning you can't prove anything. And even if you could, it's not like we're going to be forced to go through old emails as part of discovery in court. But regardless, delete the video immediately, or I will leave my mouse droppings all over your waiting room floor, and there's nothing you can do about it. Gross. Come back with a warrant. Perhaps I will. Remember, I'm always watching. Just not your videos, because those suck. Bye! A federal judge allowed Gina Carano's lawsuit against Disney and Lucasfilm over her firing from The Mandalorian to proceed, questioning whether the First Amendment allows companies to cut ties with employees over public statements. Go, Gina! Let's clarify what this means. Go ahead. So, Gina Carano filed this lawsuit and Disney tried to get it dismissed via, you know, via the First Amendment, that they had the right to do that. That made absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. But the judge basically ruled that that's not grounds to dismiss it and put it forward, which means we are going to discovery. Meaning that everything in Disney's past is going to be exhumed. Well, not everything. Things that are relevant to the case. But here's what I want to point out there, okay? couple things. Disney now has two options. Option one, try and figure out a way to get Gina to settle, which I don't think she's going to do. I completely doubt it because she's not doing it for the money. She's doing it to prove a point. Or two, go into discovery, which means a lot of things are going to come out. Now, I find it very telling and nobody's touched on this and I want to bring this up. Mm -hmm. We know for a fact that Gina was targeted. I even did a video where I show evidence of that. Yes, which I really hope gets used in evidence for them. We'll see. Regardless of whether you believe what I've shown or not, there was definitely a targeted campaign. But here is the kicker. Disney accidentally let slip that there is something that they don't want people to see. Oh, and what is that? Well, think about it this way. Let's say it was very easy for them to determine that Gina did something wrong and they had correspondence showing that they had told her to stop and she didn't do it or whatever, blah, 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 blah. Why not just bring that up as a way to dismiss it? Hmm. Why go to the First Amendment? That's a very weird stance to take. Like I said, it never made any sense to me. I just heard that and laughed. So to me... What I read from that is if something is brought up in Discovery, they will find something, which is exactly what Gina wants. So I think that they're screwed. Yes. And also, when it comes to Disney and the courtroom, Disney always wins or they always make the other side settle because Disney has always had the money to pay people off or drag out a case to the point where the opposing side has nothing left. This time, Disney is up against someone who is backed by someone with the money to go against Disney, Elon Musk, the richest man in the world. Now, whether you feel, however you feel about Elon Musk is not the point. And however you feel about Gina is not the point. This is setting a bad precedent because there were people like Pedro Pascal who said things that were similar to Gina and didn't get fired. People say, oh, well, they told her to stop and she didn't stop. She didn't even say the thing that got her fired. Yeah, she shared someone else's post. Not saying that that's, uh, that was 100% okay or something I would have done, but it's not something that she should have gotten fired over. It was also something that wasn't wrong. Exactly. If she had said it outright, maybe then you could have some wiggle room, but she didn't even say it outright. So you're, you're getting mad at her for that. And there was the whole thing about not putting pronouns in bios and whatever. And I want to point out when... There was all this backlash against uh, Riva, Moses Ingram. And when I say all this backlash, like three posts. Four. They literally, the Star Wars account made a statement and they got Ewan McGregor out to denounce it. Where were any of this happening when Gina was targeted? Which is clear that there is. Yes. They gave absolutely no support to Gina whatsoever, despite how popular she is. Meaning they really wanted her gone. Either that or double standards. Probably. And lastly is Doctor Who. <laughs> This'll be fun. Hello, sweetie. River Song. 
No! I am the maestro! <sighs> okay, good. Because for a moment, I thought River turned ugly. How dare you! For every one of you that leaves the show, we'll get three to five more viewers just for diversity alone. Okay. Uh, good luck with that. Anyway, how can I help you, sir? Sir, I beg your pardon. I am them. Them? Oh, God. Are there more of you? Are they the three to five viewers you mentioned? Are they in the room with us right now? No, I am them. Right. Honey, are you finished with that straitjacket? We need another one for the new guy. It is them. This show can fit a whole lot of agenda in it. It's a bigger failure on the inside. Doctor Who showrunner Russell T. Davies acknowledged the series' struggle with declining ratings, admitting that the current viewer numbers are far from where they would like them to be, despite efforts to attract a younger audience. Wah wah. We all saw that coming. Since we started making this video, there's actually been more viewership numbers, which shows that the last episode recently of Doctor Who is actually the lowest viewed Doctor Who of all time. 2.0. Two million. That is abysmal. Or is that an insult to abysmal things? That's a drop from the last episode, what people thought wasn't going to go any lower. Now, if it goes below one million, that's terrible. But keep in mind, this is just the overnight ratings. True. Now, here's the most important thing to put out here. When people criticized this show and the writing, mostly, I'm sure there were people who criticized Shooty Gatwa as well. But when people criticized the writing or whatever, they were told that they were bigots, hateful, all this kind of stuff. And then Shuri Gatwa himself came out and said the following. Go touch grass. For the love of God, turn off a TV and touch grass. Your terms are acceptable. And then when people didn't show up for the show, there was actually a place trying to pass off the fact that they didn't come watch because it was a nice day out. They literally blamed the weather, meaning they blamed people touching grass. Honey, am I wrong that the Doctor Who airs at night? Yes, and it's usually quite rainy in England. But even if it wasn't, you're claiming it was a good day at night. Hmm. Error. Logic not found. Uh, you, you told us to go touch grass. We did. You got mad, and now you're like, well, we can't do it without the fans or whatever. Three to five new people will come in for diversity. No. They're not here. They don't exist. I hate to break it to you, but the modern audience that you're seeking doesn't exist. It is a fantasy, a complete fabrication. You made it up. Yes. And also keep in mind, the modern audience on Twitter is fake too. Mm-hmm. Because Twitter is mostly fake. That and also these people will post about the show and they will say all this stuff and then they will not watch or support it. Probably because they're not even real, but also because they don't actually support it. And it doesn't help that RTD is nuts. Nuts is an understatement. Literally admitting that your show's not doing well, but saying, oh, you were trying to get a younger audience and that's doing well. No. It doesn't matter if you got a younger audience, if there's less of an audience. Yeah, so uh, where is the younger audience? That's like saying, well, we traded a four-course meal for an entree. I was going to say a military MRE. That works too. <laughs> but th that that's... That's what it is. You're literally saying you're okay having a smaller portion. Maybe you're dieting. Maybe the show's dieting. It's definitely dying. Pretty much. I mean, that is one hell of a diet. It's almost, almost like anorexia. The episode that got the highest viewership was one where the doctor wasn't even in it. This is ridiculous. You guys are nuts. It's going to keep going down, and I can't wait to see how far it falls. Me too. The doctor falls. Popcorn. And now it is time for the diagnosis of the week where we take events from the week and compare them to a mental illness. Because Hollywood is full of them, and you should be aware. And we have an interesting diagnosis for you this week. Do tell. So the diagnosis for this week is illusory superiority. Please explain. Illusory superiority is a cognitive bias that causes people to overestimate their positive qualities and abilities, and underestimate their negative qualities relative to others. 
Essentially, it's the tendency for people to believe they are better, smarter, or more capable than the average person. This bias can lead to overconfidence in one's own abilities and judgment. In relation to today's topics, with Star Wars The Acolyte, illusory superiority is evident in the showrunner's dismissal of fan criticism as bigotry, indicating a potential overestimation of their creative decisions and a refusal to acknowledge valid concerns about the show's direction. With Gina Carano, illusory superiority is evident in Disney's actions to overturn her case despite clear evidence that they targeted her unfairly compared to others, revealing a misguided belief in their moral standing and a refusal to acknowledge their discriminatory behavior. And with Doctor Who, illusory superiority is evident in the showrunner's response to declining ratings as they dismiss audience disinterest and focus on incremental viewership gains despite alienating fans through hostile comments and a refusal to acknowledge valid criticism, indicating an overestimation of the show's quality and a lack of accountability for its shortcomings. And that's why I feel this is a great diagnosis for this week. I agree. 